Hello everyone. So we are reading the chapter The Great Plan. Now can you remember what Sophie and the BFG's great plan is? Well actually it's Sophie's plan. What does it involve and who does it involve? It definitely involves the BFG's dreams and what very important person in London does it involve? the she lives in a big palace the queen yes so sophie is just about to tell the bfg what she what he needs to mix together to make this special dream that they're going to give to the queen are you paying attention very close the bfg said i want the queen to dream that nine disgusting giants each one about 50 feet high are galloping to england in the night she must dream their names as well what are their names again blush lumpeter the bfg said man hugger bone cruncher child chewer meat dripper gizzard gulper maid masher bottle popper and the butcher boy let her dream all those names, Sophie said, and let her dream that they will be creeping into England in the depths of a witching hour and snatching little boys and girls from their beds. Let her dream that they will be reaching into the bedroom windows and pulling the little boys and girls out of their beds and then... Sophie paused. Do they eat them on the spot or do they carry them away at first, she asked. It is usually just popping them straight into their mouths like popcorn, BFG said. Put that in the dream, Sophie said. And then, then the dream must say that when their tummies are full, they will go galloping back to giant country where no one can find them. Is that all, the BFG said? Certainly not, Sophie said. You must then explain to the Queen in her dream that there is a big friendly giant who can tell her where all those beasts are living so that she can send her soldiers and armies to capture them once and for all. And now let her dream one last and very important thing. Let her dream that there is a little girl called Sophie sitting on her windowsill who will tell her where the big friendly giant is hiding. Where is he hiding? asked the BFG. Well, we'll come to that later, Sophie said. So, the Queen dreams her dream, right? Right, the BFG said. Then she wakes up and the first thing she thinks is, oh, what a horrid dream. I'm so glad it was only a dream. And then she looks up from her pillow and what does she see? What does she see? The BFG asked. She sees a little girl called Sophie sitting on her windowsill right there in, a real, in real life before her very eyes. How is you going to be sitting on the Queen's windowsill, may I beg? The BFG said. You is going to put me there, Sophie said, and that's the lovely part about it. If someone dreams that there is a little girl sitting on her windowsill, and then she wakes up and sees that the little girl really is sitting there, that is a dream come true, is it not? I is beginning to see where you is driving to, the BFG said. If the Queen is knowing that part of her dream is true, then perhaps she is believing the rest of it is true as well. That's about it, Sophie said, but I shall have to convince her of that myself. You said she was wanting the dream to say there is a big friendly giant who is also going to talk to the Queen. Absolutely, said Sophie. You must. You are the only one who can tell her where to find the other giants. How is I meeting the Queen, asked the BFG. I is not wanting to be shooting at by the soldiers. The soldiers are only in the front of the palace, Sophie said. At the back there is a huge garden and there are no soldiers in there at all. There is a very high wall with spikes on it around the garden to stop people climbing in, but you could simply walk over it. How was you knowing all this about the Queen's Palace? the BFG asked. Last year I was in a different orphanage, Sophie said. It was in London and we used to go for walks all around there. Is you helping me to find this palace? The BFG asked. I has never dared go hide and sneaking around London in my life. I'll show you the way, Sophie said confidently. I is frightened of London, the BFG said. Don't be, Sophie said. It's full of tiny dark streets and there are very few people about in the witching hour. BFG picked Sophie up between one finger and thumb 
and placed her gently on the palm of the other hand. Is the Queen's palace very big? he asked. Huge, Sophie said. Then how was we finding the right room? That's up to you, Sophie said. You're supposed to be an expert at that sort of thing. And you is absolutely sure the Queen will not put me in a zoo with all the caterpillars? Of course she won't, Sophie said. You'll be a hero and you'll never have to eat snow's compass again. Sophie saw the BFG's eyes widen. He licked his lips. You mean it, he said. You really mean it? No more disgusting snow's compass. You can get one if you wanted to, Sophie said. Humans don't grow them. That did it. The BFG got to his feet. When is you wanting me to fix this special dream? He asked. Now, Sophie said, at once. Where is we going to see the Queen? He, he said. Tonight, Sophie said, as soon as we've mixed the dream. Tonight, the BFG cried. Why such a flush bunking flurry? If we can't save tonight's children, we can anyway save tomorrow's, Sophie said. What is more, I'm getting famished. I haven't had a thing to eat for 24 hours. Then we'd better get cracking, the BFG said, moving back towards the cave. Sophie kissed him on the tip of his thumb. I knew you'd do it, she said. Come on, let's hurry. So there we go. That is the plan. Now, what do you think of that plan? Do you think they can pull that plan off? Do you think it's going to work? Um... Do you think the BFG is really never going to have to eat a snozcumber again? Does that mean he's going to have to leave his home and live in and live in London? I mean, where would he live in London? I can't imagine there'd be room for a BFG living in London. And do you think Sophie's going to get something nicer to eat soon than a snozcumber? We shall see. It's a very ambitious plan. But maybe that's what they... We will find out how they get on next time.